Nicolas Cage taught me about demon possession and black magic and the mystery religions and demon possession. So Nicolas Cage finally has an excuse for being a mediocre actor. Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! I don't have my eyes! My so you start at your critique of Nicolas Cage by pointing out that he practices a certain acting technique called Nuvo Shamanic. It's really interesting reading this article because he calls this the Nuvo Shamanic, or I guess the new shaman, you could say. And of course, it's, it's shamanic, a shaman, and that's a member of like a certain tribal society. I'm like a prickly pear! It's funny, you've actually read the article, and the article itself describes it as an acting technique. He learns to act like a particular actor, a particular character, and lives in the character. Say, and of course, it's, it's shamanic, a shaman, and that's a member of like a certain tribal society. Oh my god! So a word used in a nuanced fashion by an actor who has a technique for staying in character. And you simply take the term shamanic and then take him to be a shaman. I have a prickly pear! So from the idea of him being a shaman to the idea that all actors are shamans. And he got me thinking about something I read in a book called The Way of Word by Brian Bates. He also wrote a book called The Way of the Actor. He put forth the concept that all actors, whether they know it or not, stem from thousands of years ago, pre-Christian times, when they were the medicine men or shamans of the village. So you've been reminded of someone else's tenuous connections. As if you make enough weak connections, it might actually equal something of some genuine value. This Cage just puts it right out there. I mean, you really don't have to read between the lines on this. He's telling you he was possessed. Right here he says, I think that Ghost Rider's spirit of vengeance was mentally taxing, if only because I had to go to a Christmas party shortly after I had wrapped photography in Romania at 2 in the morning as the Ghost Rider. But I had a couple of schnapps and I went to the party. And I'm telling you that I had not entirely let go of whatever magic I had been channeling, and all hell broke loose. In fact, I kept saying over and over, Merry Christmas, you a-holes. I'll be damned if I didn't get really turned on. So an actor playing a role has to get very much into it to play the role to the full extent and becomes exhausted physically, mentally, emotionally and snaps at people, rants at people because of the massive psychological pressure that method actors can face. Whatever magic he had been channeling left him drained, mentally taxed, and caused all hell to break loose at a Christmas party. So rather than accepting the idea of acting and the exhausting process of being a method actor, you decide to jump to the idea of demonic possession and shamanic powers. That was the plan. So Nicolas Cage has played a character dealing with metaphorical demons. Guess how K.J. Osborne portrays that? Oh, it's just demons, yeah. He's using an article heading, the actual title, as evidence of demons, even though the role itself involved a person facing their personal demons, and the article has no reference to any form of literal demons, and when it mentions magic, it refers to the magic of the location. Congratulations, you're human. Nicholas Cage purchases the LaLaurie House. The LaLaurie House is a mansion in New Orleans. It's famous and it's been featured in America's most haunted homes. So an old house in a city he loves that's allegedly haunted and that makes him bad somehow. So a rich celebrity does something quirky like buying a haunted house and then has to sell it because at the time he owed a lot of money to the IRS. That is a promise. Apparently his son dresses up like a Satanist and writes a comic book with a voodoo theme. Therefore, they must be connected to Satanism. Nick Cage was also in a movie called Peggy Sue Got Married. Something really weird happened in that movie near the end. The whole movie is about this girl, Peggy Sue. She's a woman, but then she kind of goes back in time to her high school senior year. So she wants to get back 
to the future, right? How does she do that? Well, at the end of the movie, or near the end of the movie, she actually gets involved with Freemasons. You can see it right here. And these Freemasons conduct a ritual around her that actually sends her back to the future. So what we're talking about is a series of symbolic actions and actions in films that you've put together. Oh, and apparently there's a tomb which Nicolas Cage has brought. A pyramid-shaped tomb. Uh, that does not make him a Satanist. That does not make him evil. It does not make him a person who's a supporter of the Antichrist. What is it? What's wrong, sister? And please go and check out the work of the Heavy Metal Brony. <laughs>